Good evening, you're watching the Daily News Bulletin. I'm Navya Singh. Let's begin with the headlines today. Let's first begin with the COVID-19 updates. A day after India surpassed Brazil to become the second worst hit nation in the world due to the novel coronavirus pandemic, the country added a daily spike of over 75,000 fresh infections in the last 24 hours. This was the lowest in one week. Now, while the number of infections have come down after India was recording 90,000 fresh infections for two continuous days, the number of fatalities due to the deadly virus still remain a cause of concern. In the last 24 hours, over 1,100 people have succumbed to COVID-19 in India, and this number is the highest in over one month. The government of India has said that India has tested over 5 crore samples in the country since the outbreak of COVID-19 back in January. As tensions escalate along the line of actual control, India has released a statement against China over the recent developments along the LAC. In their statement, India has written that China tried to close in on Indian positions on the south bank of Pengong Lake in Ladakh on Monday. India has accused Beijing of misleading the global audience and the domestic audience by giving out false information and distorted facts. The Indian Army, meanwhile, has said that at no stage or at no point of time had the Indian soldiers crossed the line of actual control or resorted to any aggressive means, be it firing. The Indian Army, in their statement, has also said that there have been repeated attempts by the Chinese troops to move Indian soldiers away from the heights that are occupied by India. The Indian Army has also said that when Chinese soldiers came up to a position to an area which was occupied by India, the Indian soldiers shouted at them and showed them their weapons, following which the Chinese army troops fired a burst of warning shots. Now let's shift your focus to the economy of India. The Fitch ratings that were released on 8th of September projected a contraction of 10.5% for the Indian economy in the ongoing financial year. This comes just days after the official government data also showed a sharp fall in the country's GDP by 23.9% in the period between April and June. Now, the reason given by the government for the downfall in the GDP was the strict lockdown that was imposed in the country to fight COVID-19. The reason given by the Fitch ratings are also quite similar to what the government had said. Now, the Fitch ratings in its report also mentioned that the economy will recover in the third quarter, which is the period between October and December, as the economy will reopen and so will the economic activities. In another major news, a Bharatiya Janta Party MLA Mahesh Singh Negi has been booked by the Dehradun police for rape and criminal intimidation. Now, the woman who's the complainant who's filed the case against the BJP MLA has said that the MLA maintained a physical relationship with her for about two years during the course of which he raped her. She's also mentioned in the complaint that the wife of the BJP MLA also offered a huge amount of money to the complainant to hide her husband's alleged crime. Now, meanwhile, the BJP MLA has rubbished all claims. He said that this is just an act to defame him. And he's also said that the woman who's the complainant is trying to mislead the court and the public by providing fabricated facts. The complainant, however, has asked for a DNA test of the legislator and her daughter to ascertain his relationship with her. Now, days after the Indian government decided to ban PUBG along with 118 other Chinese applications in the country, the PUBG Corporation, which is a South Korean company, has decided that it will not be controlled by the Chinese Tencent Games in India. The South Korean company has said that it will take up full charge of all its subsidiaries. Now, this means that PUBG Mobile could actually return to India or could be unbanned. That's all for today. I'll continue to bring news that deserve your attention. Thanks for watching.